Hey guys, Chelsea here from Making Manzanita. Today we're gonna show you a fake oil painting hack. All you need is a thrift store frame and some Mod Podge and a paintbrush. I got this one for $2. Okay, so I've got my frame that I got from the thrift store. This was uh, $2. And then I purchased this printable vintage art off of Etsy. I just got done printing it out. To print it out, I used a watercolor paper, um, and watercolor paper has a bit of a texture to it. You may be able to see it a little better on this side. It's going to be hard to see on the camera, but it's pretty thick cardstock, and um, I think it printed really well. It gives it a little bit of texture, which is nice when you're trying to replicate vintage art. Here is the paper that I used. I just had this in hand in my craft supplies, so it's just regular watercolor paper. Uh, if you don't have watercolor paper, you could also use like a cardstock. You definitely want to use something heavy duty. Matte finish is preferable. Nothing like glossy, like a photo. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this old picture out of the frame. Pretty picture, but not going to use it. And then to get the vintage look, you're going to want to remove the glass. Um, because vintage paintings aren't typically covered in glass. Okay, so... Not going to do anything to the frame. I love the way it looks. If you wanted to paint it, you totally could. If you find your frame and you want this kind of golden look and it doesn't have it, you can use a product called Rub and Buff, which will give it kind of this look. But I love the way it looks. So what I'm going to do is put my picture onto this cardboard backing directly. So first I need to cut it down to size and it should be five by seven, but I will just double check. It's the same as this, so I am using my handy dandy uh, paper cutter here. I love this paper cutter. I have featured it in videos before. Um, one of my favorite parts about it is this little wire. I don't know if you can see it in the video. I'll try to close up, um, but it shows you exactly where you're cutting so I can see very quickly if I'm on my line or not. So that is nice. Again, trying not to touch it because it's super sticky. And then I'm going to try to center it and push from the middle so that I don't have any bubbles. Oh, no. Okay. Hopefully that is centered. It has a little bit of a give. You can see here I'm able to kind of move it around a bit before it sets into place. So I want to make sure that that is... Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to put something heavy on it and just let it sit into place for a bit while it dries. So I am going to give uh, the surface of this, since we're removing the glass, again, this paper has a little texture to it, but in order to make it kind of look a little more authentic, I'm gonna give it a little more texture and some sealing with Mod Podge. And I'm using a matte finish, so it won't be very glossy. And to put it on, I am just going to use a cheap old foam paintbrush. I haven't used this in a long time, so hopefully it's still good. Um, oh my goodness, if I can get the top off.
So the next method I used was with that same foam brush and I took it and I dipped it into the Mod Podge and I sort of pounced the foam brush up and down over the print and that just gave it some additional texture so it didn't, so you didn't see the brush marks. Um, so it was a little more texture than I had previously for the, from the first coat using the foam brush. So then after that was all dried, I took another approach for, I just wanted a little more texture to it. Once it dries, it does kind of smooth out. So that's just something to keep in mind. It dries clear, the Mod Podge, and it, the texture will be a little less noticeable as it dries. So you may wanna do this process a couple times if you're wanting a really textured look. So what I did is I took, um, instead of the foam brush this time, I took a small artist paintbrush and I dipped it into the Mod Podge and I went over the print again uh, with kind of some of the same areas that an artist really would have had it a little more texture. So I dotted the paintbrush over the trees, the clouds. I did nice smooth lines over the water surface. I brushed my um, paintbrush over the edges of the rocks and anywhere that would have had just more texture. And you can do this as many times as you want. You want to let it dry just a little bit um, before it, you're finished. Um, but then you can just go back and do multiple layers of texture. And then you can see there as it dries, it will get a little more subtle and it will dry clear. Um, don't worry about smoothing it out too much. You just kind of basically want to trace over your painting with Mod Podge. Okay. So I decided to put it here, um, just above the thermostat, just a little extra something. Um, so I did tape it down at the bottom where it just was, it had slid in, uh, but I'm just using these command uh, Velcro picture hangers. I use these for virtually everything we hang in our house. Um, they're great, just temporary. They're super strong. Actually, you wanna know a little secret? The mirrors in that bathroom that you can see right there, those are hung with these uh, picture hanger strips. So um, they're actually, and they've been there for two or th three, four, four years probably. Haven't moved a, an inch. So um, love these picture hanger strips. So they're great. So we didn't have to drill holes in that tile wall, which was awesome. Um, I'm sure you guys have used these before in your homes, but all you do is kind of press them into place um, for about 30 seconds. And then just take off the other side. And I'm going to center it above the thermostat rather than in the wall. That may be a controversial opinion, but it's my house. So I love how it turned out. I think it looks so cute here. Just a little extra something in the hallway. Um, and I like that you can kind of, from this angle at least, see one other piece of vintage inspired art, which I have here in our hallway. I've moved this around. I've had this one a couple, several years probably. Um, and I got it at a uh, garage sale. So love that little piece. It's there right now, and it looks fun in this little nook over here in our hallway. One thing that I do want to reiterate is that it's super important that you guys put the print back in the frame without the glass. If you have the glare from the glass, it's going to be a dead giveaway that it's not authentic because oil paintings never have glass over them. So if you uh, use this little hack, let me know, guys. And you can definitely use the same concept on a larger print, too. Uh, you just follow the same step by step and use it on a bigger print as well. So let me know if you guys try this. I would love to hear how it goes for you. And then just let me know if you have any questions. And then while you're here, we would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. We are here on a weekly basis sharing DIYs, renovation hacks, and just little things that we pick up along the way little fun hacks just like this little craft. So uh, subscribe to our channel, but just click our little picture here. And then while you're here, watch this video next. I think you'll love it. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye.